I love the songs that we sang this morning. It's talking about the Father's love for us, the invitation He has for us to walk with Him. There wasn't a day when He wasn't by our side. And so, this morning, it's great to be with you. Nolan, it's great to have you here. Been some hip-hop coaches here with us, with some friends. Really great to have you. Wonderful faces that we've come to love in this church. And um, it's a real honor and privilege to share with you a little bit what God shared with me. And I want to start this morning <clears throat> with a story that happened early in the year. I was on holiday with my family and my, um, my mom and my dad and my other mom and dad, my, my parents-in-law, and two dogs in a house in Pearly Beach. And it was a beautiful setting. And um, one day my dad said to me, let's go for a walk. And so I was down with that. I needed some due time. And um, we didn't quite know where we were going to go. We just wanted to get out and spend some time together. So luckily it was a small town. And um, yeah, there were times where we didn't really quite know where we were, but that was also okay. Secretly, I kind of hoped we would get lost a little bit. I didn't know where we were, but my dad had a better sense of direction, so we just kept walking. We were walking, and I soon realized into my walk, I was walking way faster than my dad. And maybe it's got to do with his age, or the fact that he had two operations on his feet. But I soon had to shift gears, go from sports drive to drive to low range, and eventually I caught up with him, and then I sticked with him. And um, as we were walking through the neighborhood, we would point out the houses we really liked and which um, we fancied or saw ourselves maybe living in, and then other homes that we said, sure, if we had the money and the time, we could do something really cool there. We could fix it up and do something really amazing. And then there were times where um, there was a lot of silence. And I was down with that too, because I realized, this is just great. I'm spending time with my dad. We're going for a stroll. What better way to spend your time? Um, we kept saying that if we do get lost, we would just need to, to head to the beach, because if we found the beach and we just worked our way back, we would eventually find some places that we recognized, and then we'll find our way back home. But we're on a walk and we're having a great time. And so, eventually, after about, I think, seven Ks, we made our way back home. And um, soon after that, I felt like God spoke to me and said, I want to walk with you in 2023. And I feel that's a word that I want to share with us at See This, that God is saying He wants to walk with us. And in so doing, our fears will be silenced and faith will be stirred to partner with Him in all that He has for us this year and beyond. So we see there's this invitation from God to do time with Him, to walk with Him, to share our hearts with Him. And in that, He is going to silence our fears, give us faith by stirring us to walk with Him. A few things that... Um, stood out for me during this walk, as I mentioned before, was my dad's pace. Very slow. It's almost like nothing was chasing him. We were on holiday. We had all the time in the world. And I realized then that I needed to slow down. You see, we live in a world where Everything is instant. It's fast. What are we going to eat right now? How quickly can we do it? We're bombarded with information, too much information for us to handle. It's not, not normal to know what's happening in the other side of the world constantly. News 24, notifications, WhatsApp group, WhatsApp groups. I need to exit some of them because my life is just full of notifications. And the world is screaming for your attention. We live in a story and a love story, and there's a war for our hearts. <clears throat> I 
Slowing down and switching off has become harder than ever. And I'm convinced that busyness is the new evil. We are constantly ticking boxes, rushing through tasks, and not slowing down to enjoy the moment that we are in. God wants to slow us down because He enjoys spending time with us. The other thing that stood out for me was um, my dad's agenda. <laughs> my dad was very comfortable with silence. For long periods, he, periods, he said nothing. Now, I didn't mind that because I enjoyed his company. It was like I was down with that. Just silence. Just walking, enjoying the oceans, the beauty around us. I was enjoying not having to prove myself or say anything. I realized that this is not true for many of you. Because for many of you, you grew up <laughs> and realized that maybe you're not enough. Maybe you need to bring something to the table. Or you need to say something to prove your value. Not with my dad. I'm fortunate to have a dad that I know loves me and enjoys me and enjoys my comfort and even are totally fine with silence. Do you know that you are enough and that God loves spending time with you? Do you know that? Do you believe that? 1 John 3 verse 1 says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. Therefore, walking in silence with your heavenly Father is enough. You do not need to earn His love. Another thing that stood out for me was the distance that we walked. I was thinking my dad could probably do three or four Ks. He doubled that. I was quite surprised by this. <laughs> you see, some of us believe that when God rescues us and, and, and we put our faith and trust in Him, that it's done. But actually, there's still a journey. There's still a walking. There's still life that He wants to do with us. It's, it's not just a cold transaction that happens. There's a journey, there's an intimacy, there's a call for us to walk with Him and to talk with Him. Romans 8 verse 30 in the message says, After He called them by name, He set them on a solid basis with Himself. And then after getting them established, He stayed with them to the end, gloriously completing what he had begun. God says he will finish what he started in you. I don't know about you, sometimes, some days, I just don't feel like getting out of bed. I feel like tapping out. It's like, this is too hard. <laughs> it's like, oh, give me a break. But if I know that God is willing to go the distance with me, yeah, it helps. Philippians 1 Verse 6 says, There has never been the slightest doubt in my mind that God who started this great work in you would keep it, keep at it, and bring it to the flourishing finish on the very day that Jesus Christ appears. This is great news. That there's someone that hasn't just started or willing to journey with you, but's going to go all the way to the end. Someone, cheer. <laughs> Do you know that God wants to walk with you? Because it was His plan from the very, very beginning to walk with us. It says in Genesis, in the cool of the day, He was walking, looking for Adam and Eve, you and me. Because He wanted us to enjoy what He's made. He wants us to co-create. He wants us with Him to create order out of disorder. One of the first jobs ever was a gardener. I love that. Disorder creates order. And in our work and in life with God, He wants to make sense of the season we are in by walking with Him. And He's willing to go the whole nine yards. 
God wants to walk with us, and in so doing, our fears will be silenced. <laughs> fears is a very real thing. It's not something we escape. It's real. And I think to get context where fears come from and how that how we wrestle with it, I want to take us to Genesis in the beginning. So we rewind. Our story only makes sense in the bigger story of God's story. And so um, Genesis 1, 2, God is walking and He's just being God. He speaks things into existence, creates things out of nothing. And every time He steps back and He says, and this is my vision, Damn, that is good. That is good, what I've just made. And with every story, there's a villain, there's an enemy. And very soon, the enemy shows up in chapter 3, verse 1, and it says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the women, Did God really say, you must not eat from any tree in the garden. Question mark. We know what happens next. Eve and Adam eats, and immediately they become aware of their sin. What do they do? They cover up. They sow fig leaves, and they hide. <laughs> Our fears causes us to not want to walk with God because of shame, and then what do we do? We hide. Notice how he says in uh, verse 1, he is more crafty than any of the wild animals. You see, the devil is an expert at this. He's mastered the skill of twisting and lying and deceiving. He's done this for many years. He's had many practices. Now notice how the devil says, or how the devil does not say, God did not say. He just says, but did he say? He loves to bend the truth into a question. So what God says, it is good, exclamation mark. He goes and he bends that into a question mark, and he just leaves you. Now you deal with that. His lies often come in subtle ways. And he whispers in thoughts, that sounds something like this. Did God really say He will provide for you? Did He really say that? Hmm. Did God really say that He loves you? Then where was He when that happened? Did, did God really say He has a plan for you? Because man, it sure doesn't look like it. Or it doesn't feel like it. The devil has never stopped questioning God's goodness. That's his aim. And he will sow doubt and fear in your life 24-7. And these questions, if they remain unanswered, turns into fears, real fears, that cripple, entangle, and discourage us. A word was given this morning, throw off everything that entangles to run this race. The fears, the worries, the lies, the what-ifs. Did God say? Entangles us, slows us down. We can't run, we can't walk with God because we're consumed by lies. So what do you and I fear most? <laughs> Let's get a little bit real. Think about that. What do you fear most? What's your biggest fear? Do you fear not being good enough? What if people had to know who I really am? Would they still like me? Failing? That's a big one. What if I fail at my job, my marriage, or exams? What if I fail? What if I'm not good enough? <laughs> or unable to provide for my family? Maybe losing my job. 
am I going to be okay with what the future holds for this country, the uncertainty that we wake up every day to? <laughs> is the light going to be more on or is it going to be more off? I had a real fear <clears throat> about two weeks ago. Something happened at work that really shook me. And um, I was really worried. I was anxious and I was gripped by fear because I didn't know I was going to navigate through this thing that came along my way. And um, thank God for friends. I have a friend, Jacques, in this church that said, we're going to make war. Let's go take some time off and let's pray. Let's wait on God. Let's hear what he has to say about this fear of yours. <laughs> so we went to a beautiful farm, took time off, just waited on God, prayed. And um, in that place of much uncertainty and fear, I cried out to God and said, would you tell me what's going on? Because I don't know. I'm worried. I don't know if I can go through this. Things didn't make sense. I was confused. I had lots of questions. And then God spoke. And He showed me what I need to do. Bam, 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 bam. And when I got up there, I had so much courage. I was like, bring it on. The fight is back. Because God spoke to me and He revealed things to me in that place of very, very real fear. <laughs> How often do you wonder if He is really good? Because it doesn't make sense what is happening in your life. So fear is basically what enters our hearts when we listen to the devil, which equals bad advice. Coming back to what God said, God wants to walk with us, and in so doing, our fears will be silenced, and faith will be stirred to partner with Him in all that He has for us this year and beyond. God wants to replace fear with faith. So the obvious question is, what is faith? Is it that thing we want so badly and says, I have faith for that? No. Hebrews 11, verse 1, 2, and 3 says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. We don't always see what is promised to us. A lot of those people... They didn't see what God promised to us. It only came later. But faith moves us into action. You see, when God spoke to me, I still had concerns. I still had uncertainties. But man, I had a courage and a confidence to walk because I knew God spoke. Romans 10 verse 17 says, Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word about Christ. Can't have faith if God's voice is not in our lives. <laughs> it's, the, it's the greatest privilege and right that you have as a child of God to hear God's voice. This morning, another word came. I think it was Dirich that said, We are God's sheep, and He is our shepherd, and the sheep knows His voice. You know that voice. When God speaks to you, just... Ah, settles things. It's impossible to please God without faith. A.W. Tozer says, what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. It's more important than what you ever do or say at any given time. It's more important than the job that you have or where you live or even who you marry. I mean, that's a big one. 
It's what you and I believe in our hearts, who is God and what He is like. It's the most important thing about you. It will determine how you love your wife. So, I'll explain. Sam is not just my wife. She's also God's daughter. You understand? So, with that in mind, there's a different responsibility there. <laughs> it's my wife, but she's God's daughter. How you treat others. Do you see the person behind the door? God's got a plan for that person. God knows that person by name. And how you view yourself. What thoughts do you have about yourself that God does not have? <laughs> I used to think that I need to be better and try and earn His love. Now I believe that He does love me and actually wants to spend time with me. I used to think that my sin is great. Now I believe that His love is so much greater. I used to unknowingly compare myself with others. I'm trying to stop doing that. Because God said to me, don't. That would just be unfair. Do you know that Jesus prays for you? How does that make you feel? When you have forgotten to pray, we don't know how to pray. I know we just went through how to pray. <laughs> but do you know that God prays for you? He intercedes for you. It says that he stands next to the Father and he is fighting for you. Man, if I ever want anyone to fight for me, it's Jesus. It says he is compassionate. Oh, he can cry. <laughs> he weeps and he cries and he has emotions. He is dangerous and wild. He loves to do the impossible, and he owns all the resources of the universe, and it's at his disposal. And he is jealous for you. How does that make you feel? Not in a kind of way where he lacks something, but because he knows what's best for you. So when God gave the commandments to his people, it wasn't a prerequisite to say, if you obey, then I will be your God. He's like... I will be your God, and I want to give you some house rules because I love you so much. Because I know you shouldn't have any other idols. Because it steals from you, it robs you. I am what you want more than anything, to walk with me. He's jealous for you, and he wants to walk with you and me. I used to think he's too busy to listen to me. Now I believe he has all the time in the world. Nothing rushes him. He lives outside of time. That's why he knows the end from the beginning. I love that. It's like a superpower. Nothing surprises him. He is never overwhelmed. Oh, I feel like I get overwhelmed more than ever. But God never does. Nothing takes him by surprise. He's the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow. He never has a bad day. <laughs> He doesn't have to get out of bed. There's not a bad side. He is slow to anger and rich in love. His mercy knows no end. He is faithful to finish the good work he has started. So I have a question for all of you. I love asking questions. My family always go, oh, another question. What is the last thing that God told you? The last thing that God told you. I often ask my kids this, and they're very quick to say, He loves me. I say, okay, fair. Why? Why does He love you? Tell me. What does He love about you? Oh. Oh. You see... <laughs> Do you know that God has never, ever had a single bad thought about you? Ever. Sam and I sometimes 
we fight, we have things we work out in marriage, and then we do this thing and say, I, I know you love me, but do you like me? <laughs> There's a difference. Some of us think and believe God loves us, but we don't know whether He likes us. Psalm 139, verse 17 and 18 says, Every single moment you are thinking of me. This is God speaking about you. How precious <laughs> and wonderful to consider that you cherish me constantly in your every thought. O oh God, your desires towards me are more than the grains of the sand on every shore. That's a lot of thoughts. When I awake each morning, you're still with me. He's there. <laughs> What did we sing? There hasn't been a day where he hasn't been next to me, by my side. God really, really loves you and likes you. He wants to spend time with you and he wants to walk with you. We can have great faith when we know God and when we hear his voice. Sometimes I fear and wonder if I have what it takes to make a success of my life. And then I discover beautiful verses like this. 2 Peter 1 verse 3. Oof, this is a good verse. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. You see, He calls us to Himself and then He gives us everything we need. <laughs> How often do we feel like, I lack this, I don't have this. This kid is different to this one, and then I have another one that I also don't understand. I need help. I have never been this far in, in life. My kids didn't come out with a manual. God, help me. And he says, I have called you to my own glory and my own goodness, and I will give you everything you need for this life. How? Walking with me. Getting to know me. Talk to me. What troubles you? What don't you understand? What are your fears? God wants to walk with us, and in so doing, our fears will be silenced, and faith will be stirred to partner with Him in all that He has for us this year and beyond. So... If God is inviting us to walk with Him, to silence our fears, and to give us faith, how is He going to do that? How is He going to stir us? He's going to move us. He's going to grab a hold of us, and He's going to do business with us. God likes to wrestle with us. He likes to be up close in person. So where does this happen? Proverbs 4, verse 23 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. <laughs> oh, it's what makes us unique, is our hearts. Like a friend of mine said, it's that nucleus, it's that thing in you that makes you who you are. He is after our hearts, and that's why the greatest commandment is, love the Lord your God. All of your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. The reason God wants your heart is because if He has your heart, He has all of you. If He only has your head or your deeds, then He has that. But if He has your heart, He has all of you. Your highs, your lows, and He's, he's okay with that. He can handle it. He's seen it all. Our hearts is what moves us. It's where we make our vows and promises, both good and bad. It's where we have experienced our deepest hurts and greatest joys. It's where we come most alive. It is the wellspring of life. So how do we live from our heart? Well, firstly, you've got to give it to Him. Some of us 
walk with God in our heads and not in our hearts. It's like we know He loves us, but we're not sure whether He likes us. It's a difference. This message is not a call to striving or to be better. It's simply to respond to the heart of the Father for us and others. And when we understand His heart, it's so easy to give Him ours. (laughs) How can you not, if it says His thoughts towards you, good thoughts, He knows you better than anyone else. There's this invitation I'll give you another example quick. When I felt like God asked me to move to India, I had a massive excuse. I said, I don't have a heart for Indians. And God said to me, if you go, I will give you my heart. (laughs) So I went there, lived there for three and a half years, and I fell in love. Because God showed me his heart. Allow God to show you His heart for you and it will change yours. I want to land the conclusion. Solution is life on God's terms. Not our terms. His terms. He knows better. There's things He wants to share with us and show us. Romans 8 verse 31 to 39 says, So what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? If God didn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us, embracing our condition and exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son, is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? And who would dare tangle with God by messing with one of God's chosen? You don't want to pick a fight with God. Who would dare even point the finger? The one who died for us, who has raised us to life, is in the presence of God at this very moment sticking up for you. Do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love? There is no way. Not trouble, not hard times, not hatred, not hunger, not homelessness, not bullying threats, not, no backstabbing, not even the worst sins listed in Scripture. None of this phases us because Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, living, dead, angelic, demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way Jesus, our Master, has embraced us. I want to end. Would you give Jesus your heart? Why would you not trust Him? He already loved you when you even didn't know Him. (laughs) So why would He stop loving you? Walk with Him. Would you allow His voice to turn your fears into great faith, to do great things with Him? Don't miss out on all that He has for you and me. Trust Him and learn to walk with Him. Amen.